start the new MBN Atlas tool using the same button that we used to start the MBN Gateway tool with. And the first thing I'm going to do is search for a particular taxon on the filters tab here. So I'm going to search on the string Bombus. And you'll see it comes back with two top level nodes, exact match and fuzzy match. And things which exactly match my search term are shown up here. So in this case, it's the genus Bombus. But then this under this fuzzy match, if I expand it, you'll see uh, other things which match it. For example, the individual species. So I'm going to select Bombus terrestris by checking the box there. Go back to the MBN tab and click on the map button there. So this is producing the default type of WMS map uh, from the new atlas and you can see it different from the old gateway it comes back as individual points for records rather than atlas squares so you've got a choice now whether you do points or squares or as before with the gateway it was just the um, atlas squares so we can use some styling options on, on these as well so if I bin this layer by using this button here which bins the last WMS layer created and I check the box here outline and create it again you see that now when the points come back, the individual points are outlined uh, with a black outline. Okay, now I actually prefer it for points um, without the outlines because I think they, the, um, if we zoom to the extent of the UK there, I think the outlines on the points just interfere with the, the sort of illustrated distribution. I'll illustrate that again by reproducing it without the outlines. Okay, there you can see. Okay, thing to bear about the data that comes back uh, from the MBN Atlas is that it's not complete and just like any data from uh, the MBN you always have to bear in mind where does the data come from, do these gaps here for example represent real gaps in distribution or are they more likely to be with data provision, in this case we can say it's mostly likely to be data provision. Okay, let's look at some of these other um, options so we've got a transparency option so if I put on the mini scale um, layer underneath this you can see that the red dots completely um, uh, opaque can't see through it but if I bin that layer to the transparency up bit and create again we'll get a layer where we can see through uh, to the um, maps underneath that's not new to you that we had that on the MBA gateway as well we've got point size so let's delete that layer and move the point size down to 2, let's say, and do the mapping again. So you can see a completely different looking layer now um, because the points are smaller. OK, let's take off the mini scale now so you can see the smaller points there. Um, we've also got the ability to, to plot the actual atlas grid squares rather than points. First of all, I'm just going to bin this layer and move the points up a tad. A bit bigger. Now I'm going to change from record points to atlas squares. I'm going to change the colour so we, we can check, we can set colours as well. And I'm going to say outline these to create the map. And now we can see, let's move this layer down below. This is the Bombus terrestris. Um, atlas layer map now with the um, point records on top so I've got two WMS layers over, open here one styled as points and one styled as atlas squares okay and the thing about these atlas squares is that the size of the squares changes to match the um, your zoom level so as I zoom right out let's go to the full extent of the UK here those squares are going to change and we'll probably see a hundred kilometer squares here and as you zoom in it will go from hectare to 10k squares the more you zoom in it will go to um, tetrad uh, and then um, monad and so on okay the other thing you can do is uh, label the squares so if I zoom out a bit until we get to the hectads. Ah, oh, actually, you have to regenerate the layer. I can't just pop that, pop that uh, checkbox on, expect them to appear. I need to actually regenerate the layer. 
then we'll see the uh, hectares with the hectad labels. And as I zoom right out to the UK, you'll see that that changes to the 100k squares. Okay, so you've seen all the basic um, style options there now. We've looked at outlining, we've looked at grid square labels, we've looked at point size, transparency and colour. Um, let's uh, just add in uh, another layer. So I'm going to bin the last layer I created, which is that one. Go back to filters, I'm going to select Bombers. Uh, Hotorum, the garden bumblebee, another common bumblebee. I'm going to change that. I'll leave that as green. So now we should get green dots for Bombus Hotorum. Okay, change this to dots. Oh, we've got the outline on there. I don't want that on really. Let's take that off. Do it again. Okay, so now we've got our two layers here. Let's put the Bombus terrestris on top. So here we can actually see, or, or despite having incomplete data, we can see a, pro, a, a real sort of distribution difference in this species up, these two species up here, because it's unlikely that if lots of records have been caught, recorded of Bombus hortorum up here, that Bombus terrestris will have been completely missed. So this probably reflects some sort of real distribution difference with those, with those two species. And it's great to be able to um, choose different styles and compare layers like this, which you couldn't really do very easily uh, using the old MBN um, gateway. Okay, that's it for this demonstration. In the next demonstration, we'll look at how to use some of these other filters like data sets, dates, and the, the utilities, and also about downloading records. Those will be for future uh, videos.